I was sick, sick unto death with that long agony, and when they at length unbound me, I felt that my senses were leaving me. The sound of the inquisitorial voices seemed merged in one dreamy, indeterminate hum. I saw the lips of the black-robed judges, the intensity of the expression of firmness, of immovable resolution, of stern contempt of human torture. Then the figures of the judges vanished, as if magically from before me. The tall candles sank into nothingness, and in silence and stillness, and night with the universe. Amid frequent and thoughtful endeavors to remember, there have been brief, very brief periods when I have conjured up remembrances. These shadows of memory tell indistinctly of tall figures that lifted and bore me in silence down, down, still down. Then horror, motionlessness, madness. So far I had not opened my eyes. I longed yet dared not to employ my vision. At length, with a wild desperation of heart, I quickly unclosed my eyes. I thrust my arms wildly above and around me in all directions. I proceeded for many paces, but saw all was blackness and vacancy. My outstretched hands, at length, encountered some solid obstruction. I then noticed my clothes had been exchanged. I tore a part of the hem from the robe and placed the fragment at full length and at right angles to the wall. In groping my way around the prison, I could not fail to encounter this rag upon completing the circuit. Suddenly, I stumbled and fell. and stretching forth an arm, I found beside me a loaf and a pitcher with water. I ate and drank with avidity. Shortly after, I resumed my tour. Quitting the wall, I resolved to cross the area of the enclosure. Suddenly, I tripped. Before me was a circular pit that I had barely avoided. Shaking in every limb, I groped my way back to the wall. Agitation of spirit kept me awake for many long hours, but at length I again slumbered. Upon arousing, I found by my side, as before, a loaf and a pitcher of water. I must have been drugged, for scarcely had I drunk before I became irresistibly drowsy. A deep sleep fell upon me, a sleep like that of death. I was enabled to see the extent and aspect of the prison. In its size, I had been greatly mistaken. I had been deceived, too, in respect to the shape. Additionally, my personal condition had been greatly changed during slumber. I now lay upon my back and at full length on a species of low framework of wood. To this, I was securely bound by a long strap. It passed through many convolutions about my limbs and body, leaving at liberty only my head and my left arms, to such an extent that I could supply myself with food from an earthen dish which lay by my side. Looking upward, I saw a pendulum sweeping slowly some 30 or 40 feet overhead. A slight noise attracted my notice, and looking to the floor, I saw several enormous rats traversing it. They had issued from the well, which lay just within my view to the right. They came in troops, hurriedly, with ravenous eyes, allured by the scent of the meat. It required much effort and attention to scare them away. 
I again cast my eyes upward. What I then saw confounded and amazed me. The pendulum had perceptibly descended. I endured the long, long hours of horror more than mortal, during which I counted the rushing vibrations of the steel, inch by inch, line by line, with a descent only appreciable, at intervals that seemed ages, down and still down it came. Down, 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 the pendulum crept. For many hours the immediate vicinity of the low framework upon which I lay had been literally swarming with rats. They had devoured, in spite of all my efforts to prevent them, all but a small remnant of the contents of the dish. I had an idea to free myself. I thoroughly rubbed the ropes that bound me with the meat seasoning. The rats then bit at my bandages. And I was free. Suddenly, the walls, glowing red with searing intensity, began to close in on me. I backed up and then wept. I shrank back, the walls pushing me towards the pit. But suddenly, an outstretched arm caught me. It was General Lassalle of the French Army. I was saved.